the dialysis circuit part one we will discuss the components of the hemodialysis circuit the blood circuit the dialysis circuit and the hemodialysis machines in the blood circuit the blood flow in QP per milli per minute, the components of the blood pathway, monitoring of the blood flow, pressure monitors, the dialysate circuit, the dialysate flow, QD milli per minute, component of the dialysate flow, and monitoring of the dialysate flow. Lastly, the hemodialysis machines. Some important functions and monitors. The blood circuit, starting from the arteriovenous fistula or the vascular catheter, according to the patient's vascular axis. The arterial part of the bloodline going to the dialyzer and returning back to the patient through the venous bloodline. We have two components of the bloodline the arterial bloodline and the venous bloodline. The venous bloodline has a venous drip chamber. Importantly, to prevent air impulse or microthrombi to pass to the patient. Continuous monitors in the hemodialysis machine of various extracorporeal circuits. The blood flow through one of three, first, which is the best, the arteriovenous fistula, and it is the preferred vascular axis, or through an arterial venous graft. Lastly, the venous caster, central venous caster which is the last choice. The pressure monitors on the extracorporeal circuit is continuously monitored on hemodialysis machine while blood is moving from the patient And returning back to the patient, there is multiple points of measuring the pressure. The arterial pressure monitor, the venous pressure monitor, and the arterial pressure monitor. Because it's before the pump, it's a negative pressure. While if the monitor is post the roller pump, it is a positive pressure. Venous pressure monitor is usually positive. And lastly, the transmembrane pressure monitor, measuring the pressure inside the dialysis. So, the three important pressure monitors in the extracorporeal circuit is the arterial pressure monitor through part in the bloodline called the transducer protector, measuring the pressure from the arterial drip chamber. 
and the venous pressure monitor through the same transducer protector. As well, the transmembrane pressure, which measures the pressure inside the dialyzer at the inlet and the outlet, called the arterial and the venous pressure. Also, the dialyzer pressure inlet and the dialyzer outlet pressure. So the transmembrane pressure equals the sum of the mean of the arterial and the venous pressure as well as the sum of the dialysis in and the dialysis out pressure. The pressure monitor while the blood is moving continuously monitored. Arterial pressure monitor, transmembrane pressure monitor, venous pressure monitor. The blood circuit starts from the arterial venous fistula needles. The arterial venous fistula needles has a needle, wings, tube and a clamp. The needle has a siliconized bevel and the back eye with a rotating wings. These rotating wings can help in reposition of the needle on dialysis. The blood flow through both direction in the needle from the pivot as well from the back eye. According to the desired blood flow, you can match the needle size. If you need less than 300, it's a 17 gauge. While more than 300, you can use 16 gauge. Above 400, you need bigger needle size. In the arterial venous fistula needles, you have to look for the rule of six before cannulation, which are the diameter of the arterial venous fistula should be equal or more six millimeter in diameter after six weeks. Of creation. It should be superficial enough and the depth is less than six millimeters. It gives a high flow as well as the distance available for cannulation is more than or equal six centimeters. The blood tubing, it includes the arterial and the venous blood tubing, the blood pump segment, heparin pump, arterial and venous blood chambers, arterial and venous line clamps, pressure monitors, transducer protectors, and dialyzer connectors. The arterial segment is coded red and the venous segment 
is called it blue color. The inner diameter of the blood tubing is small. The two parts of the blood tubing, the arterial and the venous segments, coded red and blue in color. The blood line should be smooth on the inside to reduce clotting and air bubbles. The blood tubing bump segment, the most common type of blood bump is the ruler design. Rotating rulers compress the pump segment of the tubing and sweep the blood forward. The speed of rotating determines the QP. The usual QP range from 200 to 500 ml per minute in adults. The pump segment tubing material is silicone rubber. And the rest of the blood tubing is usually made of polyvinyl chloride, BVC material. The bump segment is important. If the rollers are too tight, the blood bump segment may crack or red blood cells may be destroyed causing hemolysis. On the other hand, if the rollers are too loose, reducing blood flow below the prescribed level. Observe the fitting to hemodialysis ruler pump. Observe both the tube inner diameter and the tube outer diameter on both the bloodline itself and on the calibration of the hemodialysis machine. On the bloodline as well, there are arterial and venous clamps. And arterial and venous injection ports for injection of drugs, anticoagulation, and others. The transducer protector are a barrier between the blood in the tube and the transducer in the machine. It is a mechanical device inside the machine that converts air pressure coming from the blood circle into an electronic signal. This signal is used to display venous pressure, arterial pressure, and the calculation of the transmembrane pressure. Arterial and the venous transducer protectors. The arterial pressure monitoring, if below negative 250 millimeter mercury, at a QP 350 milli per minute, indicate that a weak flow from the vascular axis. The blood tubing venous and arterial drip chambers we have here injection site pressure monitor site attached to transducer protector, blood flow level, and filter to prevent the micro to pass. The device 
for dialysis is the hemodialyzer, which is a disposable filter for blood purification containing a semi-permeable dialysis membrane. Permeable for substances up to a certain size. Molecular weight, impermeable for larger molecules like albumin. Characterized by membrane material. Nowadays, it's all synthetic material. The structure, the performance, either low flux or high flux membrane, as well its blood compatibility, including sterilization time. The components of the hemodialyzers, we have blood connector side to connect with the blood tubing, the caps, an O-ring to prevent the blood to escape from the dialyzer, a putting compound that collects all the bundle into one unit, a dialysis fluid connectors for dialysate flow, a hollow fiber dialyzer contain a bundle of approximately 10,000 hollow fiber, each with an inner diameter around 200 micron. The membrane thickness is about 40 micron, ranging from 20 to 45, and the length is variable according to the design of the dialyzer. Each fiber, hollow structure for blood pathway, and a wall. This is the internal diameter, and this is the wall thickness. In the wall, we have the separation layer and this is inner skin separation layer is the most important layer in the sieving that determine which solid or molecule can pass. And a supportive layer 